Hey, you totally don't have to do it if you don't want to. Seriously, there's no pressure to introduce yourself to him if you're not feeling it. This is our call, not his. I'm sorry, but it's important for me to take this step. If we're truly committed to getting married, I want to introduce myself to your parents beforehand. I know that your father can be strict, but it's a respectful gesture I should make if I want to become your husband. Unfortunately, he's not just strict. He's a real challenge to have a conversation with. I believe I'll be okay. After all, he doesn't know anything about me yet, right? I've only mentioned to him that I have a boyfriend, because I haven't gone into detail about what kind of person you are. Lately, he's been getting on my nerves. He keeps prying into personal stuff about you, you know? I told him that you had to leave school to start working, and he lost it completely. Oh, really? Why would he become furious? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. But like I said before, my dad's just a tough nut to crack when it comes to conversation. Hmm. I wonder if that's the issue. Maybe he's not happy about the fact that I didn't graduate high school. I've encountered that kind of judgment quite often. People tend to look down on me simply because I'm a high school dropout. Yeah, that's pretty much it. He's the type who places a lot of emphasis on grades and accomplishments. Being the CEO of a company, those things hold significant value to him. I'm sorry if it's offensive to you in any way. I can understand where he's coming from. I mean, he is the CEO of Zenith Enterprises, a major player in the business world. It makes sense that he might not be thrilled if someone like me asks to marry his daughter. But despite that, I really want to seek his blessing before we take the plunge. It just doesn't feel right to get married without talking to him first. I can't say for sure he'll like me, but it's something I feel compelled to do. Well, you don't have to go through all that hassle. How about we just run off to some distant city and get married there? I mean, I left my parents' place because I could not stand my dad anymore. I'm itching to break free from him, you know? Once we're married, I'll finally make a clean break. We can consider those options if he doesn't give me his permission to marry you. It's worth giving it a shot before completely giving up, right? We can't predict the future after all. There's a possibility he might end up liking me. I highly doubt it, to be honest. Why do we have to play by all these rules anyway? We don't need his permission to get married, you know? You know me so well, don't you? You're aware that I prefer to abide by societal norms whenever I can. Yeah, I know your personality well. I just feel like trying to convince him is a waste of time. But if you're dead set on doing this, I'll talk to him and arrange a meeting. I'm pretty sure it's going to end badly, though. Just saying. Remember, I did warn you about it. Don't worry. I'll handle it. I'll go talk to him on my own. You can stay home, all right? I appreciate your concerns, really. Just remember, he can be pretty intense with his words. It might get a little bit intimidating if you're not used to it. Okay, thanks for the advice. I'll keep it in mind. You miserable excuse for a human being. I swear on everything sacred. If I ever catch a glimpse of your sorry self in my house again, you'll regret it. You're nothing but a bottom-dwelling parasite, feeding off the scraps of decency. I wouldn't even wish to breathe the same air as your filthy existence. Right this damn instant, get the hell out of my house. Don't you dare test my patience any longer. Wow, this is way worse than I anticipated. You're more aggressive than anyone I've ever met. You're nothing but a worthless piece of trash. I can't believe I'm even bothering to waste my precious time talking to someone like you. I see right through your little game, you gold digger. I mean, just look at your greedy face, practically oozing with desperation for my money. It's crystal clear that the only reason you're interested in marrying my daughter is to get your grubby hands on my wealth. Ugh. Talking to you makes me physically nauseous, right from the pit of my stomach. Sir, please, try to relax and take a moment to compose yourself. There's honestly no reason for you to be so consumed by anger. I really have no interest in your money. I'm not a materialistic person, you know. My love for your daughter is sincere and comes from the depths of my heart. That's the sole reason I wish to marry her. Man, I am beyond disappointed in Natasha right now. I mean, seriously, she's actually with a high school dropout like you? You're scraping the absolute bottom of the barrel in our society. Where the hell is she anyway? I know damn well you've kidnapped her or something. Quit wasting my time and hand her over already. I have not kidnapped her. 
She is living with me because she wants to. I decided to come here alone today because I didn't want her to worry about me. I wanted to talk to you, man to man. Why on earth would I ever want to waste my precious time talking to someone like you? Your breath reeks so badly that it's literally suffocating me. I genuinely wish you would just shut up and keep that foul mouth of yours closed because it's turning the whole damn house into a stink fest. Seriously, what the hell do you even eat every day? Do you chug from the sewage like it's your personal beverage dispenser or what? The insults just keep pouring in, don't they? I better grab my notepad and pen because I definitely want to take notes on how to be a master of mockery. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll have the pleasure of using them on someone deserving. Oh, uh, quit with the smart aleck act already. You didn't even manage to graduate high school for crying out loud. While you were out there slacking off, I've been busting my ass, dedicating my life to studying and achieving greatness. I've reached heights you could only dream of, graduating from a top-notch university. I've been climbing the corporate ladder at elite companies ever since, and guess what? I'm currently the CEO of Zenith Enterprises, in case you forgot. Yes, I'm already aware of all that. Your company, Zenith Enterprises, has quite a reputation, and I've actually heard of it before as well. Listen up, you low-life criminal. I've got an ironclad sense of justice coursing through my veins, and I won't stand idly by while scumbags like you threaten the safety of my family. Hold on a moment. Let's take a step back to here. I believe you're blowing things out of proportion. I assure you, I am not a criminal in any way. I really don't understand what you're trying to say. Oh, please. Spare me the innocent act. Maybe you're not a criminal at this very moment, but mark my words. You're destined to join their ranks sooner or later. I can practically read it on your face. Those sneaky little expressions that scream, Future criminal! Don't think for a second that you can fool me with your feeble attempts at innocence. Hmm. I'm really curious as to what kind of face I was making when I was talking to you. It's fascinating to think about what impression I might have unintentionally conveyed. In any case, I'm sorry if I did something to offend you in any way. Oh, look at you, the epitome of ignorance. I can tell you've never bothered to crack open a book in your entire life. You're nothing more than a pathetic high school dropout, aren't you? I wouldn't be surprised if your own dim-witted parents were nothing but a bunch of incompetent criminals themselves, letting you abandon your education like it's some kind of joke. Any decent parent with two brain cells to rub together would never allow their child to make such a foolish decision. But hey, I guess you come from a long line of moronic lawbreakers. Could you please refrain from discussing my parents in such a manner? My mother faced the challenging task of raising me single-handedly while battling an illness. I made the difficult decision to leave high school solely to support her financially, covering both her medical expenses and our daily living costs. Wow, your family is desperately broke, aren't they? It's pretty obvious that your parents didn't bother saving any money. How irresponsible of them. Are you seriously saying that? How could you say such a thing? Your sob story is so tragic, it's laughable. You really think I'm going to feel sorry for you? Well, think again. I don't care how much you try to manipulate my emotions. I'm not going to hand over my precious daughter to a pathetic loser like you. No way. I have high standards, and I want my daughter to marry someone who's actually worth something. Clearly, you're just a lazy good-for-nothing who can't even take care of themselves, let alone provide for a family. So, save your pity party for someone who actually cares, because it's not going to work on me. Did you really just refer to me as a lazy good-for-nothing? I've put in tremendous effort to reach the position I'm in today. I don't perceive myself as a failure in any way. Also, I'm serious. Don't insult my parents ever again. I hold a deep appreciation of my mother. And even if given the opportunity, I wouldn't want anyone else to have raised me. That excuse is beyond weak. And it's definitely not going to cut it if you think you're worthy of marrying my daughter. Instead of wasting your breath with these pointless stories, why don't you actually contribute something meaningful to society? Maybe then we can have a conversation worth having. But until then, don't even bother trying to convince me of your worthiness. It's an absolute joke. I guess it's pointless trying to have a normal conversation with you. Oh, look at you, you pathetic leech. It's crystal clear that all you're after is my hard-earned cash, using my daughter as your golden ticket to a life of luxury. Well, newsflash, you delusional dropout. I would never even consider entrusting my precious daughter to a lowlife like you. Couldn't even finish high school. 
So, do us all a favor and get the hell out of here right this instant. Your presence is not only an insult, but it's also an utter waste of my valuable time. Scram, you worthless parasite. Fine. I'll do as you say. Goodbye. Yeah, that's right, you piece of trash. Man, what is up with your dad? He's totally off his rocker. Babe, this is exactly why I keep telling you not to bother seeing him. I tried so hard to get through to you, but you just wouldn't listen to a word I said. I honestly didn't expect him to be such a horrible person. I've never met anyone as despicable as him before. Is he truly the CEO of a company? It's difficult to think that someone like him can hold any position of authority and expect to be respected. Honestly, I feel like he's gotten even more arrogant and obnoxious since he climbed up the corporate ladder. So, tell me, what ended up happening after you had that encounter with him? We couldn't even have a decent conversation. He was just constantly throwing insults my way, so I made the smart move and walked out. <sighs> Screw all this drama. Let's just do what you suggested from the start and elope. It would have saved us so much trouble. Yeah, we should have just done that from the start. Sometimes it's alright to bend the rules a little bit, especially when we're not doing anything illegal. It's a bummer, though. I had this tiny sliver of hope that against all odds, you two would hit it off somehow. But hey, he's in for a real shocker when he finally discovers who you truly are. I can't wait to see the look on his face. I had hoped that he would recognize me when I went to see him. But to my disappointment, he didn't even give me a chance to speak. He simply told me to go home without any opportunity to explain myself. It was disheartening to say the least. He's getting up there in age, so maybe his memory isn't what it used to be. Plus, you had that mask on, right? No wonder he didn't recognize you. But you know what? None of that really matters anymore. I'm done with him. I'm cutting all ties. We don't have to see or talk to him ever again. You know what? I think that's the best decision we could make. And I gotta say, I'm seriously blown away by how you turned out to be such a compassionate person considering he's your dad and all. It's probably all thanks to your mom. She was truly an amazing person. It's just so unfortunate that she passed away at such a young age. I've made every effort to overcome such an immense loss, but it's still proving to be too overwhelming for me. I am really thankful for your mother. Yeah, I am as well. I miss her so much. I'm glad that you're here with me, Dean. Hello? It's me, Natasha's father. What's the matter? Do you have something to ask me? It's just that I received a letter from her this morning. It said that she's cutting all ties with me and that your name is Dean Elliot. I see. I had no idea that she sent a letter to you. That's very kind of her. I'm sorry to say this, but I'm going to get married to her regardless of what you said to me. That doesn't really matter right now. Are you telling me that you're really Dean Elliot? Yes, you're right. I am the person featured in the TV advertisements for Zenith Enterprises. I work as an actor. Wow, I had no idea about that. It's quite surprising to be honest. I'm curious though, why didn't you mention it during our meeting the other day? I was told to get out before we could even have a normal conversation. You just kept on spitting insult after insult. You probably weren't listening to a single word that I said anyway. I'm sorry about how I treated you. I was probably having a very rough day. Okay. Why did you decide to contact me? I don't particularly want to be talking to you. If you have nothing to say, then I'm going to put my phone down. I want you to let me apologize to you. I had no idea you were Dean Elliot. I'm sorry for my attitude that day. I guess I was a little harsh on you. I'm not going to forgive you even if you apologize to me. You were being overly aggressive and never gave me a chance. I'm never going to forget that. I could never say the things that you said to me, even to my worst enemy. I'm very sorry for the things I said to you. I understand why you wouldn't want to forgive me. If I knew who you were, I never would have treated you that way. I may be successful now. It still doesn't change the fact that I was born in a poor family and that I dropped out of high school. Everything that you said to me hit me where it hurts, not to mention brought up painful memories. It's not something that I can just forget. Wait, I didn't actually mean any of that. I didn't think you would take my word so seriously, to be honest. Also, you never would have apologized if I wasn't Dean Elliot, right? You're only saying sorry after realizing who I am. 
There's just no way that I can forgive a person like you. Your apologies sound so empty to me. Do you really know what you did wrong? Of course I know what I did wrong. I got a little too carried away because I didn't know who you were. You really don't get it. You shouldn't be that aggressive no matter who you're talking to. It doesn't matter if you're talking to a famous actor or a high school dropout. You need to treat everyone with more respect. Yeah, maybe that's true. I know why you're apologizing to me. This is very bad for you and the company if it gets out. The CEO of a company shouldn't be calling the poster child a piece of trash. I'm sure you also falsely accused me of being a criminal. I wonder what would happen to you if the entire world found out about this. Are you threatening me right now? No, I wouldn't do such a thing. I have no intention of telling the world what you said to me. It's just that Natasha seemed very adamant on telling the world about everything. I did try to stop her, but I'm not sure it was enough. If I were you, I'd try to talk to her about it. What are you saying? Is she trying to destroy my life? Seems like she has a lot of hatred towards you. Now that she's cut ties with you, who knows what she might try to do. That can't be good. I better talk to her right away. Hey, Natasha, I heard what's going on from Tom. I heard that you're planning to release my secrets to the world. Are you trying to destroy my life? Yeah, it's really true. I've had to endure so much pain being raised by you. I also saw the text you sent to him. I was absolutely disgusted. How could you talk to people like that? I've already leaked all the screenshots and other things to the media. This is just a little revenge for me. Wait, what? You're joking, right? I'm not joking at all. I can't forgive you for what you did to us. I was just planning to cut ties with you, but that would be boring. How dare you do such a thing? This is going to cause problems for so many people. Your stupid decision is going to make the value of my company stock go down. All of my employees and the owners of my company's stock are really going to struggle. I'm sorry, but I really don't care about that. I'm sure they'll all be fine in the end. Please hold on a minute. Could you please rethink this? I need you to do something about this. There is nothing I can do about it now. The information is already spreading around the internet. It's going to be all over the place by tomorrow. My work phone won't stop ringing. I can't believe what you've done to me. Aren't you my daughter? Yes, I am your daughter. I had to be the one to do this. No one else would be brave enough to stand up to you. You're going to have to resign from your position. That's the only way you can stop matters from getting worse. You need to give up and resign right now. There is no way I'm resigning my position. That company is going nowhere without me. All the employees respect and looked up to me. What are they going to do without me leading them? Wait. What? Do you really think they'll respect and look up to you? You're joking, right? All of your employees are over the moon about finding out what you did. Wait, what? Nobody at the company respects you. They were just scared of you and the power that you had. You would insult and threaten them all when they didn't listen to you. I also heard some bad rumors about you from the young women in the company. That's because... I've also been talking to some people that work for you, and I've heard some horrifying stories about you. I'm going to send all these stories to the media as well. That's about all I want to say to you, and I'm finally going to cut ties with you for real this time. Goodbye. Wait, please don't go yet. I really will apologize for everything that I did. Please don't abandon me. We're family, aren't we? If you abandon me, I'll have no one else left. I don't want to be a part of your family. You're a terrible human being. I promise that I'll change myself. I plan to treat other people with respect from now on. I'm begging you to please come back and live with me. I'm sorry, but that's never going to happen. I hate you as a person. And also, one more thing, you absolutely stink. After his daughter severed all ties with him, he was forced to resign from his position at the company. It became inevitable once major news outlets began exposing his actions to the world. Recordings of his voice and stories detailing his mistreatment of employees were leaked, intensifying the situation. He quickly transformed into one of society's most despised people, making it highly unlikely for him to secure future employment. Moreover, he faced multiple lawsuits from former employees, citing harassment and sexual abuse among other grievances. The resulting damages he had to pay amounted to millions of dollars. Presently, he resides alone in his sprawling house, rarely venturing outside due to the constant harassment from people who taunt him about his foul reputation. It's become a sick game for some to capture his reactions and share them online. 
In contrast, I'm genuinely relieved that we chose to marry without his blessing. It was a wise decision to distance ourselves from that toxic influence.